Okay, welcome to Christians on Campus Bible study during the middle of the week here. Um, the, the, uh, the topic uh, for this semester, we have two topics, but the first one, first series, bearing fruit unto God. Okay? And um, actually tonight, we will go through some of the passages here in John 15. So we will see where this um, terminology, bearing fruit, comes from. Okay? So, uh, very, very important. And, you know, from the, our last week was a basically our intro. Okay? I know some of you maybe not have been here. The last week is a basic intro. Okay? To show us that Preaching the gospel is very important. In fact, uh, I think Eric shared that that's the highest virtue of a Christian is to bring God, whom you enjoy, whom you have received, into another human being. That is the highest virtue of a Christian. Okay? And also we need to realize that, you know, all the gospels, they end with the Lord Jesus charging his disciples, go, right? Disciple the nations. Go, speak to all the creation. Creation, not, not just even people, even speak to the dog. <laughs> speak, to, speak God's word everywhere, right? Um, and then in, in the gospel of John, the Lord said what? You love me, Peter? Shepherd my sheep. Take care of my, my sheep, my lambs. Okay? And then in the book of Acts, it says, right, the Lord, you know, he ascended, says, uh, the, the, the Spirit will come upon you. Right? And then you shall be my witnesses. In Jerusalem, that's where they were. In Judea, a little bit outside, and Samaria, a little bit outside, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's Ohio State. That's the uttermost part of the earth. <laughs> okay? So that's, so we realize, you know, the, the Lord did everything for us to save us, to give us himself, give us his life. And his expectation now is now we need to propagate, minister, Right? Share what we have enjoyed and received to others. Okay? So, so again, I don't know how many of you have read John 15. Okay? It's a very particular chapter. Okay? So, uh, let me just go ahead and get started. Okay? So, in John 15, 1, the Lord says, I am the true vine, the vine tree. And my father is the husbandman. That means like, kind of like the farmer, the cultivator, the one who is the source, the one who takes care of the vine. Okay? So, who's the vine? Jesus. But look at verse 5. It says here, I am the vine, you are the branches. So who are the branches? That's right. You're looking at yourself. You're the branches. The Lord Jesus is the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We may read that. And, okay, he's the vine. We're the branches. But you stop and consider it. The Lord Jesus is the vine. And all, every single one of us are the branches. What does that mean? <laughs> Don't think that the Christian life is you just join some Christian club. Or I joined a religion. Or I joined a church. Now I'm, I, I meet with Christians on Sunday and I read the Bible. No. You know, 
When we received the Lord Jesus, the book of Romans says that we were grafted into the cultivated tree, olive tree. Do you know what grafting is? I don't, I don't, we don't have any horticulturists here. Or, what you do is you have a tree and then you take a branch from another tree. You kind of make a little wedge and you put a little, and then you, and then the, 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 two, the branch from the other tree gets involved with this other tree and then eventually you, you wrap it up and eventually the, the two become one. It's indistinguishable almost. So if the Lord Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, you realize how intimate your relationship is with God? Right? If you, have you ever seen a, a grapevine? Which, can you differentiate which is the vine and which is the branches? <laughs> you can't. It's all one entity, one, all, one organism. Okay? If you see this picture, you have to realize, wow, the church is so intimately connected to Christ. It's like we became one. Okay? And now what happens here? It says, and let me read John 15, 16 here so that you realize something. It says here, the Lord says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I set you that you should go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. So this is from this verse we realize the fruit we're talking about is not the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians. That is, you know, love, long-suffering, forbear, all these things. That's not what we're talking about. It says you're, you not only bear fruit, but your fruit needs to remain. So we're talking about people. Not only do we need to bring Christ to them, they need to remain to become part of us as branches in this universal vine. Okay? So very clear. Now, what are the branches of a grapevine used for? <laughs> this also will give you some insight. Do you use the, the branches of a grapevine to make some table furniture? <laughs> Do they have some wonderful flowers that you can have some decoration? No. The branches of a grapevine has only one purpose. Fruit. That's it. So you consider if, if the Lord is the vine and we are branches that are connected to this vine... What is your only main responsibility as a branch of that vine is to bear fruit. Okay? So, um, think about that. Consider that. Why did God put his life in you, Jekai? You know why? Because he wants to flow his life from you to someone else. You have some family members not yet saved? Maybe some friends, some neighbors, some classmates. They don't know God. Guess what? The Lord set you in the vine. You should go forth to bear fruit. Right? Actually, each one of us are set in a certain place. You have a certain family. You have a certain home. You have certain neighbors. You have certain co-workers. You have professors. You have teammates. You have all kinds of people the Lord set you in that specific place for you to do what? Go forth and bear fruit. And that's all we're good for. We're not good to be decoration. We're not furniture. It's fruit. <laughs> okay? So praise the Lord. So how do we bear fruit? Okay. Now, um, you know, when we think of gospel, many times we have a lot of funny ideas. You know, you ever hear those guys out there in the Oval preaching and yelling at people? 
We may think that that's the gospel. Maybe. I mean, it's good to proclaim. But that doesn't do it justice. And how do we bear fruit? Do we, we need to argue with people? I need to load up on all these, you know, apologetics and how I can prove from science and how can, the solar system that God exists. And Don't waste your time with that. <laughs> how does the branch bear fruit? The branch bears fruit by what? You see the branch sweating? No. It stays connected to the vine. It says, abide in me and I in you. So when you are connected to Christ and you are receiving the life flow through our prayer with him, through our enjoying his word, through our fellowship with the other branches, Guess what? There is a flow of God's life. It's called fellowship. Flowing in you. Flowing out of you. And guess what? When I get together, maybe I call you know, a certain brother and we pray on the phone. Guess what? Some flow happens there. Some life juice of the vine. And the more we are in that flow, all of a sudden what? You don't need to try so much. The life of the vine tree will produce the little buds eventually Grapes come out. So our responsibility is actually to be in this life flow. Enjoy God. Pay attention to Him in our spirit. Right? And sometimes we're about to do something and then the Lord says, Oh, Shania, don't do that. Don't say that. And we say, Amen, Lord. Guess what? More flow comes. <laughs> right? Following the Lord. We're one flow with Him. We don't interrupt that flow. And all of a sudden, if we are really in this kind of enjoyment of this flow, guess what happens? Fruit will come. People will notice. Opportunities will pop up, and eventually just God comes out of you. Even by the way we live. And again, okay, so we have a lot more fellowship coming up, and all of these points we will touch. Gospel is not just preaching. Gospel entails a lot. But what I want to talk about tonight is we need to stay in this abiding, in this flow of this life. Eventually, spontaneously, actually, fruit will come. Okay? So don't worry. You don't need to be out there with a megaphone yelling at people. Right? I did that. Actually, when I was in college, I did do that. Almost got a snowball thrown at me. But we weren't, yet, we weren't condemning people. Actually, I remember it was Valentine's Day, and we were saying, Lord Jesus, we love you. And Jesus loves you. <laughs> so that's a little sidebar. So you can still do that. But don't think that that's, that's the only way the gospel. No, the gospel is you remain in this flow. You're abiding with him. And look at this. It says if, in 15.7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Right? So it's good. That's why we have Bible study, right? We, we come to God's word. Not only are we abiding in him, eventually his word is living in us. What happens when God's word is living in us? Actually, we become one with God. So that eventually, whatever what God wants, that's what we pray. That's why it says here, if his words abide in us, then you ask whatever you will, and it will be done for you. What do you think God wills? <laughs> he wants people to get saved. He wants people to know God. So this asking here is, when we are one with God, and I just say, Lord, what about my cousin? He still doesn't know you. What about my neighbor? Right? What about this person just lost their, their husband? Or this person just lost their dog? They, they're sad and they're seeking something real, right? Then we begin to ask. And what happens? When we ask in that way, it says, the Lord says, it will be done for you. Okay? So, that now, there, it does come with a little bit of warning too. Okay? So let me read this point here. If we do not abide in the Lord, and then we do not bear fruit, then guess what? The enjoyment of the life supply from the Lord will become dried up in our experience. 
How many of us, maybe you've experienced ah, this Christian life thing getting a little old, get a little stale, right? A little dry. I'm, Bible study, uh, okay. I'll, I'll drag my body there. <laughs> There's not a jaw, you know, why? Probably in this matter, we have gotten short. Because look at the verse here. It says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruits, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. All right, 15.6. If, if one does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is dried up. Okay? Now, this doesn't mean that you lost your salvation and God threw you away. No. Once we receive the Lord Jesus, we are forever saved. Don't even think about that. However, in our experience, is there a flow within you? Is God so fresh? And you just can't wait to be with the brothers and sisters? You just can't wait to be in the Word? Or you're just going to dragging? Okay, let me tell you a secret. If you live your Christian life for yourself only, at a certain point in time, you will dry up. Why? Because God's life is for us to others he wants to flow out the more we flow out God to other people the more we will receive the enjoyment it's kind of like a hose right the hose right you you, you turn the water on it fills up right but what if you don't let the 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 the, the spray come out it fills up and at a certain point it stops that's it that's, that's all the water you're gonna get but guess what? If I go open that up and then boom, the water goes out. I'm watering the lawn. I'm washing the car. The more water goes out, the more flow comes in. You got it? So the same thing in our Christian life. The more you speak God to people, the more, oh, I need more of the word. I need more prayer. I need more fellowship. That's how it feeds itself. Okay? So, and, and that happens to all of us. If you feel a little dry, Check with your experience. Maybe we need to begin to pray a little bit more and consider how we can flow God out. That way we can receive more God in. Okay? Okay, last few more points here. Bringing sinners to God and bearing them as our fruit is the real way to glorify God. Okay? John 15, 8. In this, this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so you will become my disciples. Okay? God doesn't care how many touchdowns you throw, how many boxers you knock out, and you say, give glory to God. Right? That's okay. But heathens can do the same thing. They can score many more touchdowns. What really gives God the glory is when we bear much fruit. At least that's what the Bible says. Okay? In this, that you bear much fruit, so you will become my disciples. Right? And finally, bringing sinners to God and bearing them as fruit makes our joy full in the Christian life. And John 15, 11 says, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. Okay? So, um, this illustration with a vine tree, very helpful. The Lord used it to point out a spiritual reality. Okay? How many of us here want to have a joyful Christian life? Yeah. Let me tell you. When you deny yourself and begin to consider and care for other people, and especially bringing God to them, your joy will be made full. Right? Um, that, that's for sure my experience. You know, there's a, there's a certain, you know, a time in my life when I just, I was working a full-time job, I had a home business, and spiritually I wasn't doing so well. Right? I didn't really care so much about people. I just wanted to 
be self-sufficient. I still went to the church meetings. I still did all these things. But inwardly, I felt like so dry. Not much joy. Even not much purpose. Okay? But praise the Lord. Eventually, the Lord visited. The Lord shepherded me uh, to, to repent and to really reconsider my life and my my day-by-day -day living. Um, eventually, it came to a point even I, I quit my job so I can just flow God to people. <laughs> and you know what? To this day, my, I'm just full of joy. I feel like I know why I'm alive. I know the meaning of my human life, right? And the same thing with you. I know you're all here getting a degree because you want to get that job and get that career. But... Remember, doesn't matter how many zeros you put in, the, in your bank account, it's still zero. Put God into people. That will bring you the real joy. Okay? So, please, study well, get all A's, graduate, get your degree, right? Do your internship, get a job. But just remember, your life is not for that. Your branch in the vine and your existence is for what? bearing fruit and when you are doing that then you feel like wow my life is full of meaning and i am full of joy and god is glorified amen okay wonderful so that's all i have today and uh maybe we can just yeah break up you know into the small groups and have more fellowship